Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, Guy Stacy with me. Shalom. And today we're live on Blog Talk Radio. Yeah, we made it. We made it. <laughs> we're here. We're actually waiting on our callers to call in at 319-527-6084, waiting on our first caller. And so, Stacy, what do you want to talk about? Um, let's talk about, um, what you got going on. What's some of the up- upcoming classes that, um, you're thinking about, um, some of the things that you've been working on that will be interesting? Well, we have, uh, the feast days coming up. Um, the feast of the seventh month is coming up and that's always a big time for our channel as people tune in to try to find out exactly what it is that we're supposed to be doing and when we are supposed to be doing those things around the feast days yeah you have a lot of new subscribers so i'm sure a lot of them um haven't participated in the feast of trumpets and they want to know exactly what it is and what you do yeah this is the season i believe it goes on a seven year cycle where our father sends out kind of a call for his people to kind of bring them in and this seems to be one of those times when a lot of people are coming in to start participating in the feast days mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. so um like you said a lot of people get interested around this time wanting to know when it is and we've done classes on that when the feast days are and um and they want to know what it is that we're supposed to be doing well you're a firm believer and i know that you have um taught this throughout every class that you've done well throughout all of your channel that it is the feast days that has to be kept in order for you to um be a part of the kingdom yeah um the way i understand the scripture um it kind of says that if you aren't keeping the feast days you're not really a part of his of his people it even goes to you talk about how you cut off and even you know I hesitate to say, but it kind of puts people in the category of a heathen. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, we call them Gentiles. They like that word better. When you don't keep the feast days, it makes you a Gentile. Mm-hmm. You're not really, and and it, and that's what separates um, his people from everybody else. Um, it's not really anything to do with blood ties or anything, because if you are a direct descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But yet you're not keeping the feast days, then you are a heathen mm-hmm. or a Gentile. Mm-hmm. All right, looks like we have a caller here from nine one eight. If nine I, two eight. Nine two eight. Let's see if I can get this to work properly. Oh, caller nine two eight. Welcome. Shalom. Hi, how are you doing? Seem like I rec- seem like I recognize his voice. Yeah, just brought your car. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> how you guys doing out there? We know you guys are always working hard out there. Um, so how's it going out there? You know, we're so obedient. You know, this right here, Coach, it's, it's like the gratitude is so it's so huge. It's for what the Most High does for us, you know, and just for all our brothers and sisters. It's just awesome. So we're learning so much. And just we see things different, you know, especially when love is number one. Right. And you just see everything with love, you know. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. Love, man. It just, and it's that, that, that practice, Coach. You know, we appreciate y'all. All the things y'all done for us is it's everything, man. Yeah, you're decent, decent people, man. So it's grateful, grateful that the most high I chose y'all to push the word, man. Along with all the brothers and sisters out there that's doing it. All of them. I mean, every last one of my brothers and sisters, man, I love, I believe in, and I appreciate, grateful for, and, you know, because we all learn it. So, you know, you know. Yeah, our you know, Father, it's a blessing what He's doing for us, for us, because, you know, we we were lost. You know, many of us, myself included, were out there in the world, and if He hadn't came and rescued yeah. us from that, you know, I mean, we had no hope. We, we didn't even know, you know, where we were or what we were doing, but because he came, reached down and, and scooped us up, then, you know, we're able to sing his praises and even, you know, help some others to, to find the path. So it, we consider it a blessing. It is. And, you know, we, 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 we got age on us. So we came coming out of like, you know, serious things, you know, 
I talk to the brothers, you know, whenever I can. You're like, we're we coming out of curses, man. You know, and, and two, none of us wrote the Bible. You know, none of us wrote none of this, man. And the Most High has given it to us the best we can. We got to be humble. We got to be for sure, because these words are serious, man. You know, and so when, when you got the, the attributes of Christ, and you know you got a man in you. It's like when when those are being applied and you're pushing it and you're just being that, being that, that vessel for your shire, man, it's just so many things open up. Right. You know, and it, and it, I'm talking from trees to the wind to the rain to all the brothers and sisters, to every color. It don't even matter. It, it, this, this right here is a spiritual thing, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. You now, know, so- we can't get caught up on no color. Right. So, Carr, um, if if you if you don't mind, hang on, hang. If you don't mind, uh, if you would, hang on the hang on the line with us and continue to talk with us. But we do have another caller from five one four. Let's bring them into the conversation. Uh, five one four. Tell it. Tell us uh, who you are. Where you from? Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, originally from Chicago, from the. United States. Uh, I'm in Canada, and I uh, started to find you. Uh, I guess about 2018, uh, 19, and uh, it, 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 it's, it was like some missing pieces um, with the Third Testament and the Book of Enoch and um, Shepherd Shepherd of Hermon. And for me, you know, I was diagnosed with attention deficit. And um, so when I found your your channel, when you started to talk about, I'm a little nervous because I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, when when I when when you started teaching on the book of Enoch, <clears throat> with the with the cycle of how the planet and things are moving. Um, I was really, really interested in that because I was considered a special child when I was growing up. So I was very sensitive to uh, seasonal change, and um, I used to be fascinated with the movement of the planet and the sun and the moon. And because I was considered uh, uh, diagnosed with attention deficit and put into special classes and uh, things like that, and then once I, you know, as a female, once my period started, uh, I started to feel very out of sync, you know, like um, just uh, not in sync with everything else that was happening on the planet with their days and um, how they would calculate the, where the months would begin and end. And, um, and I felt that it was really affecting me. So, I, you know, I started to do a lot more research and I started charting um, the seasons and the moon and uh, even the time schedule. Time, time, I had no sense of time. Like, I, it was like time for me, for one person could be an hour, but it, um, it would be an hour for me. It would feel like an hour, but it would really be like five hours or hmm. five years. Like, I have just no sense of time and uh, because of my profession I was I, I was able to travel very young and I've been traveling pretty much all my life so I've been around the world and things so I was coming in and out of time zones and then one day or one period in time uh, you know through my travel my trips I, f- I realized there was actually no time uh, that I could actually uh, control my body uh, without it being affected with different time zones. And, and when, you know, I just started having these uh, epiphanies. But, you know, that started much longer, uh, younger anyways. Uh, once I got into understanding your, the book of the Third Testament, I found myself in there. It, it started to make sense, even though I had done a lot of research and, 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 and studying of uh, other spiritualities, uh, you know, that sort of, give you some um, concept of who you are and why you don't really fit into their system, the system that was, that's been created from the schools to, to the churches to 
um, just everyday life kind of concept. You know, with the holidays and, and you know, since I was very young, I just never was interested in them. Like, maybe because I was also raised as a Jones Witness at a certain, you know, point until I became like a early teenager or late teens. But, but because of that, because I've grown up as a Jehovah's Witness, I was already conditioned uh, to not celebrate these holidays or to receive blood. That I took that very young. It made total sense to me. So there's a lot of uh, channels. Um, and like the, the, the man was saying, uh, I, didn't, I didn't get to his, hear his beginning statement, but he was saying how, you know, some of us are older now. So I call us the people that, you know, are the bridger people because we're sort of come from before the Internet. And, you know, we got the opportunity to be in the Internet because before the Internet, I was traveling and I was reading like books like crazy. Like I, the most expensive stuff that I owned was books. Like I had like books and books. I was just reading even when I was working and doing my job. If I had a moment, I'd be reading a book. So I was in uh, museums and libraries and uh, wherever, whatever country I would go to, I would have really great conversations with the people because I was just, you know, searching for information. Um, nothing felt right to me. Nothing made sense to me like what I was, had been, been taught. So, um, well, yeah, so by the time that I, by the time I found your channel, I had already done a lot of research as far as the book, Bible, and things like that, and other spiritualities. Because basically, the New Age people, what they did, they obviously have the Third Testament book and the Shepherd of Hermes book. And these people have cut these things up into pieces, and, you know, like it's, you know, something special that only, you know, a certain group can get. But you can see that, you know, everything, any other books that we have have come from you know, the Bible and right. these ancient writings. Right. I think one of the uh, things that stand out for me that you said and that we hear a lot of is talking about the Third Testament. You know, a lot of people say that it's not true, but everyone seems to have the same testimony as to how it speaks to them and as to how they find themselves in that. I know when I first read it, it felt like home to me. Everything about it is stuff that I had been feeling, but I didn't know how to express it. And so that's, it's just a wonderful book. It's a, it's a great gift that the father has revealed to us. Yeah, and you, you mentioned how you found the channel in 2018. Well, that's actually the year that I discovered the book. That's when I first found out about the third Testament in 2018. And if I'm not mistaken, Shakar, that's when you actually started coming around our channel too, in 2018. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, like I was uh, telling the caller, um, 514, and I didn't catch her name, but um, she was talking about how she became, how she found our channel in 2018. But one time I looked it up, um, back, I went through and looked up your comments, and you actually found our channel in 2018 as well. That was the same year we found the Third Testament of the Bible. Yep, and the Hermit We were doing the drawings. Right, we was doing the drawings back in 2018. Doing the drawings for the Hermit Understand it, yeah, yeah, and and so it's something special yeah. about these books, like like the caller. Well, I'm sorry, caller. Um, five one four. Um, if you don't mind, will you give me uh something to call you, or maybe you can give me your YouTube channel name, and I can call you by that. My name is Roro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Roro. Very familiar. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Love you guys. <laughs> Uh, and you know what I think also um, is to, that the vocabulary um, wasn't available, right? And language is a big issue. Language is a big weapon that they've used um, against the people of all nations, right? Because we know we got the modern language, right? right. And I, I'm, I do music, so that was another issue that I had in music where they started, you know, middle C and, and all that and how, you know, music 
uh, modern music and how they changed all the, you know, the, the frequencies and uh, the scale set up. Um, so they did the same thing with language, you know. And because I travel, I deal with a lot of different languages. And some languages I couldn't even hear the frequency. Like, I couldn't hear the melody. I couldn't figure out where, you know, a word started and ended. So I believe, too, for, for the people of the world. I would have to say, too, because of uh, being an American, a so-called Negro. That's what it says on my, my birth certificate. That was another thing that was fascinating to me and no matter where I traveled around the world, I always felt like people knew something that I didn't know, you know, like, um, and that used to, you know, uh, cause some sort of stir inside that just kind of made me feel, like, despite the fact that I, I traveled the world, I would always come back to North America, and then I still never felt like I had a home, like I didn't belong anywhere, like I couldn't really rest anywhere, that's kind of, you know, how I feel as a so-called Negro. But, and I was trying to find myself in the Bible, right? Um, and unfortunately for our people, when it, when I say our people, I'm not um, uh, eliminating all the other nations. I love all people, you know, like I've traveled and people, you know, lived in their homes and, I, you know, I judge people according to their character, at the same time, I do want to be a nation. I do, you know, like I know I have family, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I kind of feel that way that, you know, everybody, everybody else can have their family, but, you know, we, we're sort of all over the place and we're, right. we're not even allowed to speak about it, which is a little bit disturbing to me. But it's, it's our vocabulary and our language that's difficult to communicate to uh, our people let's say, people that are so-called less educated or, or you know, less fortunate, uh, there's a, 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 a frequency barrier um, how they've created this music uh, scale that you can be living right next door to some people and they speak a different language, but before you even get to see them or talk to them, there's a wall barrier, a frequency that is in place. I don't know... If, you know, once all these statues and things and, you know, all this um, portal cleanup and all that, once that's all done, maybe all of this will be <clears throat> removed. Um, but this is the part that I find kind of difficult when it talks about in the Bible, when it says, you know, my people are walking around like if they're drunk on strong wine or something. And this is so clear and clear. I don't want to take too much more time, but I just, you know, it, it's amazing to be, you know, for me to talk to you guys because I feel like I speak uh, an alien language, you know. I don't really have anybody that I can t have a full conversation with or, or allow me to finish a, a statement or a thought. Um, so I'll just take a break for now. <laughs> no, it's very good. That's, that's exactly what, what, what this show is all about, giving you guys the opportunity to, you know, express, you know, what it is that, you have on your heart and I, I want to find a way to put it on YouTube to, to share it, you know, with the rest of the community. Maybe we'll get a little bit better. We can do it live and then, you know, everybody can chime in. But it's, it's very good to hear, you know, hear your voice and what you have to say when it when it comes to the frequencies and stuff like that. You know, don't 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 forget about the cell phones and these other um, electronic devices that we have around us. Um, I was reading a scripture the other day. I believe it was. Um, the sealed portion um, uh, 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 the Book of Mormon, I believe it was the sealed portion that was talking about how um, these frequencies from these devices are actually affecting our algorithm. I forgot what they, our biorhythms or something like that. We we have a, 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 a yeah. yeah, and when we have these cell phones that's you know operating on these different frequencies, it actually affects us and actually you know changes. Um, the way, even the way we think and the way we act, it actually has a big effect on us. And well, in 19, I think it was 1995, I realized that, I, I, you know, because I was so sensitive to 
spirits and frequencies, like if I walked into a room or, you know, whatever. But what I, what I noticed was uh, one day I just decided to take my television, to no longer have a television in my house, right? And by then, too, I had met a, a church that I was starting to frequent, and, and they were discussing, uh, you know, frequencies and, and, and even, you know, uh, the sitcoms that were on the TV and the programming, but I was physically sensitive to the actual uh, box plugged in the wall. I could feel the, 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 the what do you call it, the waves. The vibrations, right? yeah. And, um, yeah, the vibrations and stuff like that. So when I think about, Okay, so I'm from Chicago, and I think about Chicago, and I remember, you know, when I was young, when, you know, what it was like and how they built their cities, right, and where certain people are living. Uh, they have them in, in a sort of a microwave kind of uh, setting, day in and day out, right, day in and day out. So you mix that with, you know, the food and uh the TV programming and and the music, and then when they leave the environment, then they go outside and they have you know more of the same you know. So um, I find it you know <laughs> if if the people if they had really gotten um, the Book of Enoch and um, Shepherd of Hermas and the Third Testament and of course some of the other ones. Uh, for identifying them, their particular selves, like the Maccabee books and things like that, I don't think that you know um, the world would be in the pop, in the condition they are because the so-called white people, if you want to call them, they they are they've been lied to, right? Big mm -hmm. time, right? right. They've they, you know, and um, because they recognize the light. I know, like here in Quebec, where I live, um, the Quebecers. Uh, recognized early on that, you know, the Catholic Church was a big lie, so they rejected it, right? Completely. Right. But that was the only God that they knew of. That's the only teaching that they had received. They didn't get anything else, right? right. So these people are more um, pure, in a way, uh, than than the, the ones that have been going to the church every weekend, right? Um, uh, you know, they, they, they seem to have this mentality like, well, you know, we they reject that, and they, they just basically like, we'll just wait for the creator, <laughs> you know, like, whoever the real creator is, we, we know it's not them, so, you know, but a lot of them are not, are no, are no different from what you might see in other countries with you know, so-called black people in despair and poverty, because uh, in their, in the in the so-called Caucasian race of people, they they can't get any information either. Right? Well, yeah. So, as a whole, as a whole, um, for the people that, what the book says, you know, the, the, the creator is reading our hearts, and I do have, I did write out some questions um, uh, concerning the sealed portions and, um, you know, um, the other one was, yeah, when we talk about these angels and, and the repentance period and the people that are waiting for the second coming of Christ who's going to come supposedly as some person, for the people that are very sensitive, you know, they know that they've gotten visited by um, either, you know, the spirit of Christ uh, you know, or, or the angels have come, uh, they have received this is or this visit, right? So those people aren't looking for you know this uh, description of you know what uh, the Catholic Church is teaching about the rapture and things like that. And so I go back to the to 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 language because people really don't get uh, how language is is kind of like the anchor, it's like the nail in, in a piece of wood that keeps. The, their system in place, right? Because it's through their paperwork, it's through their their laws and st their statutes, and that anchor um, the people to be under this type of control. So it's the words, right? With 
that they're using these words on, on, on the people. So, okay, my question, sorry. Um, in the sealed portion uh, books, it talks about Michael, uh, the creation of Michael. Now, in the sealed portion, I think it's like chapter, between chapter 7 and 10, where it's talking about when, you know, Michael was created, you know, and Jehovah was created and that, and, you know, who, you know, how, how Michael was created and who Michael is supposed to be. So I was a little bit confused about that because uh, one of your video videos speak about, you know, Michael and Elijah coming. And uh, in the sealed portion, it says that Michael is, is Adam was once he got into the physical form and he became a mortal being, he became Michael. So is this the same Michael? Like, you know, um, that's supposed to, you know, stand up for uh, the children that are trying to learn how to follow the law and statutes, right? Right. Yeah. And it's... the second, the second part of this, sorry, the second part of this, question as far as Michael is concerned he's also known as an angel and so we have these other people like that do tarot card readings and a lot of these new age people they, they use the angels a lot you know um, yeah. in their work right they talk about Gabriel and Raphael and all these angels so I'm like okay Are these the same angels? Right? Yeah. <laughs> angels are they? You know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you well, know, are they twin angels or what? Because how are they supposed? How are they getting with? You know, how are they using these angels or these? You know. That, you right. Know, well, they. We they, supposed to believe it. They. I'm sorry. They. They. They actually are the same angels. Well, the 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 way I understand it, our father has. Elohim or angelic figures over everything. For instance, there's an angel over the air. There's an angel over the fire. There's an angel over water. There's an angel that governs the, the, you know, the animals and different stuff. There's an angel out there that's, you know, even carrying a sun across the sky. We read about in, in, in the, um, the book of Enoch. The thing about it, what people have learned to do over time is to worship these angels. Where they we supposed to devote all of our ador adoration to our father, they are kind of going around him and only concentrating on one particular angel. Like for instance, the angel over fertility. Well, we know that's one of their big ones. They have fertility gods, you know, worship all over the country now. It's it's because they they are trying to tap into that particular power without gaining the rest of the knowledge without gaining the rest of it without you know so that so they're ignoring the angel of the covenant and only focusing on the angel over fertility well you end well they end up with the fertility but then they don't have the the torah principles behind it and so they end up kind of making themselves into what 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 the keys of enoch referred to like a witch they actually turn themselves into witches where they're gaining this power like the tarot card readers you know there is some truth to what they're doing the problem is is that they're they, they're not embracing the whole package they're only going for the for the power aspects of it and what they can get out of it without the the control aspects of it and so they end up turning themselves into a witch a lot of times I use the, the analogy like in martial arts. Whenever you step into a martial art class, they don't give you, they don't teach you how to kick people the first day. They, they give you control and they start telling you why you're not supposed to fight and how, you know, fighting is dangerous and how you, you, you. And so when they are going straight for the angels and tapping into their power, they're circumventing that knowledge and it's doing more harm to them than good. But this, okay. and then as far as you know, as as far as Michael and Elijah, these these Elohim, until you really get into the keys of Enoch, it's it's it gets kind of um, 
it's, 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 it gets really complicated on how this all works. Um, if you remember in the book called, if, if you remember in the book, Daniel chapter 12, it talks about how um, we will shine like the stars forever and ever. What that's referring to is how one day we too will become angels. Once we've learned how to live as humans and how to operate under the Torah here as humans, when we go on to the higher mansions, we will be angelic type figures, you know, so so we will be not not maybe not the Michael, but we'll be on that same uh, spiritual realm that they are. Thing about it, when this world transitions, when it when it changes, when 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 it, you know it all goes up in in flames in the end. Well, at that time, any body, any spirit that is not elevated enough to go on to the higher mansions will be brought back to another dust world. They'll be put back in another earth just like this one so they can start the process over learning what it is they need to know to be humans. The thing about it, the ones that are ready to go on, the ones who have ele have you know, learn to live within the law and have completed their missions, they actually end up being the Elohim in the next dust world. If that makes any sense. So uh -huh. Michael used to be a human, just like you and I. Uh -huh. uh, he used to, well, he uh -huh. used to be a human, just like you and I in a previous world, in a previous, a previous existence. He used to be a human. And since he he was allowed to elevate to the position that he is, when he when he came back in this world, it, 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 um, I'd have to go reread what you was talking about the the um, in the key in the in sealed portion about how he was Adam. But if in fact he did come back as Adam, all that means was he was the blueprint. He's the he was the blueprint from the other world. And he and and so he's come back now to give us our characteristics as humans and what we are to look like. First of all, and secondly, it's his responsibility to prepare us to go on to the next. step. It's his job to save us. He it, it, I, when you was naming, I thought you was going to name the Messiah, too, especially the Jehovah Witness. I believe what they was one of the first people that I heard say that uh, that Michael and the Messiah were the same entity. Well, it is Michael's, it is the, just like the Messiah, if they are one and the same, they have the job of teaching us what it is that we need to know so that we can go on to those higher mansions. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, Roro, if you don't mind, I, I got another caller here. Let me, let me bring them into the conversation if you don't mind. Oh, we still have Shakar on the line and, and he can chime in anytime he wants to. Um, but we're going to, uh, bring in caller two, six, zero. Welcome to the channel. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah. Can you? I can hear you now. Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't know. I can hear you. So, huh? so tell us, tell us, tell us your name and where you're from. Yeah, how you doing? Shalom, brother. How are you doing? Um, I'm I'm doing okay. Cool, John. Stay, stay. Um, um, this is amazing. At the same time, it's painful because a living testimony is just that. It's a living testimony. What can you begin in that? What can you start? Um, hey, if you have the time, can I start from the beginning of my life? It might. Um, I don't know, I don't if, know if I'd be beneficial to someone. Hello? Yeah, we hear you. Start somewhere. <laughs> okay, 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 I'm sorry, but 
this is very emotional because most of my life, even walking around people, I felt alone. Um, I, but I always felt God, the presence, his essence, and I feel like that's the Christ spirit. He sent the comforter when have a life of pain and not knowing why things are the way they are. The scripture say, blessed is a man that give up what in a moment may come into this world and they come into consciousness at two. Um, I remember eating chips out of the trash, and I wonder where my mom at, where my dad. And then, as the sun was shining on the porch, my grandmother come up, and she wrapped me in her arms, and she took me home. She bathed me, and she started to teach on me the word not yeah. to steal, kill, or destroy, or hate anyone. But one thing she used to say, don't trust white folks as far as you can throw, throw them. But I didn't wish to believe that because I have to live amongst people being that I'm one person. I, I can't um, stop wars. Oh, I can't stop hate shots. I can't stop people from being homeless. I mean, these are the things that I, I wish I could change in the world um, because I know it's a way that we can build homes and people not have to pay rent, I would think. But um, I don't know. I'm just in confusion, but at the same time, I feel blessed. And I feel like I ate off the tree of good and evil. Hmm. Because when your eyes are open, you see the things you have done and the things that was done to you. And so now you're caught between two worlds and you wrestle with the flesh and uh, you wrestle with the mind daily. Where to go, where not to go. Who to entertain, who not to entertain. Because spirits are all around us in the flesh. And no one seems to want to drop down to the knees and repent and atone for their sins. And I know that I have not been perfect in his sight, or do I try? And so, the most people I can reach in, in my time, in my space, is by prayer, the meditation, daily. No matter what I do, no matter what has been done to me, but we should be able to pray for those that are alive existence because no matter what I go through someone in a worse position because I made it this far thanks to the power and the grace and the mercy of our Heavenly Father out of be his name yeah. because we all go through trials and tribulations and when we pray for each other those that need it will receive it. And so I say that some of my testimony, yeah. if that helps anyone. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a very important testimony, I believe, because a lot of people are going through this right now, especially our father's people, the ones who are doing his work and are trying to, you know, walk the path 
seem to be having it the toughest right now when it comes to, you know, our loved ones, our friends and our neighbors and our family members around us. You know, uh, we read in the, in the, the, even the book of Matthew, it tells us that, you know, they're going to, re- they're going to reject us. And, but I believe what we have to do, one, one thing that we have to do is we have to remember is that they're not rejecting us. They, they don't have anything against us. You know, I used to, when I first started this walk and, and, you know, try, I was out trying to, uh, minister with my family and that's all I felt was rejection. But it was like one day it dawned on me, you know, the only reason why they are rejecting me is because I'm talking about the scripture and I'm talking about the Bible. If I were to go, if I were to go back and start the conversation talking about football, or talking about soap operas, or talking about anything of the world, we would have a, a great conversation. It would be just like the old days, everybody laughing and joking around. But the soon, but as soon as I turn my conversation toward anything scriptural, that's when the rejection is going to start. So we have to remember that they're, they're, it ain't us. They ain't got nothing against us. It's him and his ways that they have are against. And the thing about it, it's the season that we're in now where anybody who's who's not being prepared to lead those on the other side of this tribulation, anybody who's not being groomed right now, anybody who's not the bride right now or living their best life. They're 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 having they're they're having so much fun, so much fun and enjoying life so much that they don't have time to pay attention to our father and anything he has to to say they're in complete rejection of it because the the scripture is against materialism but the whole world is into materialism right now so they are rejecting that and when we come and when we come I'm sorry I don't want to touch you go ahead because I I, I know you said it's about the goodness of him and I don't want to um at first, I'm thinking the wrong thing because the most I ever want is gracious in all that he does. I ask him to be, as I was born here in America, and um, I ask the Father because I know we have um, our ancestry and our history was um, taken away from us. So I ask him to restore my tongue upon me. And so sometimes I talk with the Haitian accent and um so to me, that's a blessing. And for him to help me be able to see is a blessing. For to be able to try to build a stone structure is a blessing. For planting seed in the ground is a blessing. Um, to have the breath of life is a blessing. So the goodness of the Most High is endless. I just wanted to say that. Now I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, 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 he's definitely here to, to, to help strengthen us and, you know, help make us better. Is is the thing about it is, it's not always a pleasant experience. You know, um, a lot of times I'll refer people back to the Shepherd of Hermas. Um, that the other callers refer to the Shepherd of Hermas addresses, you know, all of these issues from, how it is that we're supposed to, you know, act around these people. And if it goes into, you know, why it is that, that they are, you know, why it is that they're rejecting or even talks about, you know, what happens to them at the, in the end. But it's so beneficial that the, that the word is there to guide us and to, to tell us about these pitfalls that are coming and even, you know, tell us what it is that we're supposed to do to, to, to survive and make it on the other side of some of these things. I, I agree, Coach. I agree. Totally. But we're knowing, knowing that the, the word is a living word. Everything has an action to it. And it looks like something. And we've been learning this. And the most high been showing us. You know, and that the hard, hard, hardship, the hard part of your heart is when you see people not happy. And especially you see people not happy and in the laws of statutes, you know. And you just, you, you really wish that people could feel it, that uh, what, what the Lord put it in our hearts. Because it's a joy that is different, 
it's very, it's very, very different, but it's, it's the best thing I ever came across. It, and it, it, it makes a lot of sense now, you know, that this world is sick and they need love and healing, somebody to care, you know? Right. And so we don't know how to do all these things. Um, well, I think, have... I, I think, I think, you know, um, when Coach was speaking about rejection, uh, um, and there's a video that you, you also posted that about the people at this time that we're, we're getting trained or learning to be obedient. Um, it was, what was the other one? Obedience, uh, zealous. There was something else you said, I hate was said in the video, but the rejected part, the rejection part for myself personally has been very difficult because I, I'm, I'm grateful, like you're, like one of the callers is saying, that I'm grateful that um, as, I, as I see my progress, it's not me personally, of course, right, but the progress that the Spirit is doing inside of me, that I finally got that revelation as far as, you know, not to take these things personal, which was really, 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 really hard. Like, it was very, very hard to not try to defend yourself, try to defend the Father, try to defend the Word, try to defend, you know, uh, why it was so important. And and, and uh, getting this, this, this peace that's coming um, at the same time, like the, the caller was saying about how painful it is to see people suffering and and um, you don't want to hear you and things like that and how difficult it is to keep moving forward. And I, I started to use the analysis of a, a soldier who, you know, goes and they have, you know, the territory there. They have to, you know, close off things and they got to find the people in charge of the territory and give them the orders to deal with the people and give those people a certain amount of time before, you know, the soldiers actually appear and, and um without panicking the people, um, but the soldier can't, can't, you know, stop and cry all day, you know what I mean, like, um, otherwise he'd never get the job done, like, we, you know, so, uh, I don't know, you know, as a female, this has been a difficult thing, because, of course, we want to nurture at the same time, we want to, you know, we want things done right now, right, so, um, but, um, the praying part, um, and Coach did a, a, a quite a bit of videos on teaching people how to pray, what, what, what real prayer was. And um, once I got that, the Spirit had come to me, and then the videos really confirmed. I think a lot of times that's what's really going on, too, is uh, the Spirit has come to individual people throughout the life or whatever period of time. But uh, at this time, uh, especially the ones who, who are coming from the non-internet period and to the internet period, this is the time for us to have a lot of actual documentation, like, you know, factual information. You know, people can go and find it in old books and the library, where before we didn't have that. We, we were only going on, on what we were receiving from the spirit and our intuition, and, but we had nothing to stand on, right? And so the people um, that we would speak to, uh, you know, they wanted proof. They want they want to see something documented. And even for ourselves, we were like, for me, I was like, okay, maybe I am crazy, you know, like, <laughs> I am hearing some voices and stuff, you know. But now, the confidence um, and I also understand too. When I was younger, I was I was trying. I didn't have confidence. I didn't know why that was why, what what that was about. Like as much as I was so called successful, I didn't have any real confidence. And now I understand that confidence, real confidence, really comes from the from the Father and um, from the things of His um, seed or what He wants uh, His His past. And so you know the confidence of the world wasn't fulfilling to me. So uh, at the same time, I, I, I really have a strong passion for the for the for the children, right? Like the new children, the babies that are being born now. And um, that was my goal with this 
collecting all these books and trying to get this information was to prepare myself for the children. Um, because, you know, we have this generational gap, like, you know, my parents and my parents' parents, and then us, my generation, we're this sort of um, new seed or something, like, you know, like uh, something different. Not that they weren't different, but um, less materialistic, right? Right, yeah. Than uh, the generation before. So, yeah. I can imagine as a, you know, here in Quebec, we have a lot of Haitian people. I really love the Haitian people, of course. Um, and, um, you know, um, what has happened, you know, to the Haitians, too. I mean, it's all over the world, but we can't really pick one place. But, you know, rejoice, uh, my brother, my Haitian brother. I uh, thank you. I think um, I got a portion of what uh, the father is doing with me because not to, I'm not boasting or none of that, and I can't boast or nothing because I give all glory to the father. But um, it, it, it don't have no refrigerator. I use my generator, right? Because I think. There's people who don't have electricity somewhere. I think, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong. So how much do I need in a day? I think about different things to where I try, not because I can't have these things, but because I know somewhere someone don't have what I have. And so I know I'm blessed, even if I don't eat. In a day, I know someone who I ever ate and in three or four days. And so it's not that I test the Father. It's just I know that the will that he put in each one of us is stronger than what we think. Because the scriptures say that he that is in you is greater than he that's in the world. And she that's in you, her, is greater than she that's in the world. And we need to uh, motivate inspire and inspire each person because when he say love thy neighbor as you love yourself I believe China is our neighbor I believe Russia is our neighbor do I know the people do I know what they're fighting for no I would never understand war that's something I don't understand because the father say be fruitful and multiply and so I I know what I'm up against in the world and it's bigger than I it's bigger than any one of us and that's why the Father's will is being done, um, how would be his name. And so we have strength in that. And I know that even though I might be alone in the flesh, I'm never alone in the spirit. Because who can number the children of Israel? Who? And it's not about color or any of that to me. Not to me, but because if you have life in you, your life, and I believe our life should be cherished, and appreciate that. Um, if, if you know, you know what wickedness is, and you know what it isn't. We we know what we hear, and we know what we don't. Um, it's just as simple as that. You know, those that have eyes will see, and those that have ears will hear, and we entertain. But we entertain, and again, I'm not perfect, but I try to um, rather think about those who um, take the time to read and even speak about the Father these days because I don't see how people are entertained with games and watching movies about killing when there's so many people already being taken away uh, from the earth and floods and tornadoes or whatever going on, wildfires never stop on. And I know it ain't the Father doing it. It's us because of the things on the earth it's our resources, and we should freely be sharing with others. I mean, it ain't like these things are coming from outer space. I'm just saying, um, we can send choppers to war, but people, um, we caught in these floods and stuff. 
try to evacuate them. And I say, so where can I go to be a fireman and put out a fire? In what house? In what city? Where can I stop these floods? Yeah. They didn't, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, we're told that, you know, our responsibility, you know, going into this thing, one of the reasons why he has put us in these remote places and got us by ourselves, and, you know, doing all of this studying and, and going through all of these changes and stuff is, you know, preparing us to help in these times. But he tells us that our help is actually coming through our prayer. That's our that's our way of being the firefighter is not necessarily going on and, you know, donning a suit or jumping on a, a fire engine. But yeah, we, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I say. And so I try to do it like the X-Man, Xavier, when he go into the room in the wheelchair and he collect the connect to cerebral with the mutants and yeah. the humans. Yeah. And um, where safety needs to be and those that need to be protected that they protect that you know because we have Archangel Michael right stand for the children mm-hmm. you say um, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael all the holy hosts um, I can't count the holy hosts of heaven is there anybody on earth that can you know so um, I know at the end of the day there ain't nothing we can do but pray mm-hmm. because I can't be at two places at one time. But in my mind, I can be almost in every city, every place, every universe, every galaxy, every dimension. Because in my father's house, there are many mansions. That's my imagination. That's my meditation. And I, I just pray for love, peace, and light, and life, or to all that deserve it, all the ones that need it. Yeah. Yeah, that's really all we can do for them. But, and, and then, you know, on top of, you know, praying for them, we, we can also be prepared to, to give them some, in, some type of guidance, some type of instruction when we see them going through hard times, especially like when, um, um, when you said, um, I can't remember if it was you that said it or Roro to say it, but you know, when we, when people are having time, having a hard time, even though they are keeping the Torah and even though, you know, they're walking in the truth, they seem to be, you know, having a hard time keeping the statutes, but yet they're having a difficult time. We have to remember that there is a transition period that we all have to go through. It's covered in, um, uh, the Shepherd of Hermes and Commands. Um, no, it's actually in, in the similitudes, right? When it, mm-hmm. it talks about how we come in contact with the angel of punishment, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, the majority of us, all of our lives, we have been dealing with the angel of pleasure. And he has, you know, he's, he's been really cheerful with us and keeping us fat and happy and, you know, giving us everything we want. Well, you know, I was, I was thinking on this the other day. When our father provided us with everything that we wanted, we decided that we wanted to go back into the world and enjoy the things that they wanted. Well, you can imagine when somebody would have, for instance, they would have left Jerusalem walking to walk into Babylon because they preferred to be in Babylon. And they've been in Babylon enjoying that Babylonian lifestyle for all these many decades. Well, When it comes time to make that trip home, that's when it's going to get difficult. And that's where a lot of us are at now. That's why we're having so much trouble right now is because we're actually on the way back home. You know, and we got this extra baggage that we got to get rid of. We got all of these bad habits that we picked up in Babylon that we got it. And we have to get rid of them before we get back home. Else we're not going to be accepted back in our home. So we're going through this transition and it's difficult. It's full of financial pains. It's full of rejection from our family. It's full of humiliation. It's, 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 ba- mm-hmm. it's loneliness, you know, we basically, all, all those things, yeah. Yeah. And, and, but all of that is because of us. 
And what we decided, we decided we were going to leave home and we decided we were going to, you know, make that long trek into Babylon. We, we made the transition going into Babylon. You know, we threw our hole down and, you know, we picked up a gun or whatever it is in Babylon. We, we threw down, you know, planting, uh, vegetables and growing our own food for the convenience of going to the store and buying food. Well, now that we're on our way back home, guess what? Now we got to actually relearn how to till the ground and our muscles are not strong enough. We don't have, we, we're not even prepared to do that kind of labor anymore because, you know, we've gotten away from it. And that's what's making it so hard on all of us. Everybody, every one of us is going through this now. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that's a blessing for me to be able to till the ground because I till the ground. I enjoy it. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a natural form, form of exercise. Like that keeps your heart, all everything, your mind clear. You know, that's the best thing that could happen to you. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you feel young. I chop wood too. I chop wood and... It makes me feel, it, it feels like I'm doing something with my body, you know what I mean, other than oh just being around the you know? But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a... I so many blessings that, and, so many blessings and, that I didn't realize. And for you the, know? the modern Disneyland world that most of us grew up in, right? This Disneyland belief, like we live in some sort of make believe. All these uh, unfortunate females uh, that are alone, right? Um, because they got, you know, the government system has convinced them that they don't need a man. Right. Um, this is this is this is the most saddest thing. This is this is the most pitiful, pathetic. Um, Thing that has happened to the Western woman because when you see the rest of the world, it's it's, it's night and day. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Me, I, me, I, I cry. Yeah, yeah. Me and Coach was actually yeah, having, I, having this discussion this morning yeah. about how our women are in such trouble and we don't even realize it. So I, I definitely agree with what you're saying, Roro. You don't realize it. They might got they may have gotten a, a glimpse of it though in these last three years with this lockdown and they were in their nice little condos and mm-hmm. they had a great job and everything, no man and everything you know, before this lockdown, I'm sure they woke up hope, hopefully right? Yeah. Hopefully they woke up because they, you know, we've been living in Disneyland and so if you if you're going to be growing and tolling the uh, the land and the whole the way that the, the way that the father had constructed the situation was perfect, okay? He created a man and a woman, and we were supposed to work together, right? Mm-hmm. And um, somehow, you know, our sisters have to really humble themselves, right, and just be really get humble. Because men take in a different way. Men are different uh, energy, and um, they're different. Right. right. Yeah. We're different. We're different, but we're obviously we're compatible because you know the seed didn't explode in the egg and everything. You know what I mean? Like we 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 were created to be able to complement each other and to be able to get along. Right. So, um, but. Um, because of how they, how they, you know, I speak about the West because it's very different from other countries. They have their dysfunction, but they still know, you know, uh, the the lineup, you know, uh, the men in place and the women, you know, they still know their roles, right? They still like have their dysfunction, but the West is completely like just messed up, you right. know, the role reversal and. I don't know what what we were thinking. Like, who's going to raise the kids? And, and mm-hmm. they don't even they don't even know where food comes from. Most of them, like you know, like it's pitiful on that side. So, the praying part, you know, um, the crying and the you know pleading for mercy uh, upon our people, because um, even like the Haitians and the Africans, like they're still even when they come over to uh, the Western world. 
they still keep a lot of their um, uh, culture. Yeah, you know, they don't get confused about, you know, in their homes. Like, you know, they may, when they leave the house, they may, you know, you wouldn't know if they were Christian or whatever they were, whatever. But when they're in their house, they keep their home sacred still. This is my observation, and, 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 and partially a lot of the Africans. But, um, you know, they still keep that male, female, you know, um, the man is working, you know, the woman is home, she's making babies, keeping house, you know, they're faithful to each other. And in the West, we don't, we've really lost that. Um, for some, way, some reason, the female has been completely brainwashed. Completely. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's that. I don't think that. Um, that's that's it. Because uh, me personally, as a man, um, I have neglected women because here in the West, in some places, we don't respect women. When you have a strip club or you have um, of things on television and women show themselves in ways they shouldn't. It doesn't help the little girls and it doesn't help the little boys because instead of them learning about God first, they learn about lust and uh, envy and greed, the wrong things. They're chasing out of the things in the world. And it's, 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 I don't think it's a Western or Eastern or North or South thing because all these things are going on everywhere and it's not... And saying that you're wrong, but um, I know that we're all we're supposed to be slow to anger at our loved ones, and that's something that I had to learn the hard way. Because yeah. when something's gone, it's gone, and you realize how hard you would work for it. Yeah. And um, I shed tears sometimes um, to relieve certain pain and sometimes I see tears of joy. Um, especially when the father come around and he make guys sing in ways and take away pain that I couldn't take away myself. Yeah. Um but um some people are put in certain situations you fight say if you're fighting against the whole city and not just your family but even the system itself and to where they have taken things, even people, because we say the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so when you have outside men who come into your house and treat you as if you're not a man, and can put your wife in handcuffs and put you in handcuffs because you don't identify yourself, that makes you feel less of a man. Yeah. And so you could cry for that. Yeah. Because you can't, what can you do against that? Where's your army at then? Yeah. Who's done for you then? And so I ask the father to stand for me because I know that happens. Because some people abuse their authority. And when you abuse your authority, you can divide a household, not even knowing and you go home and see, but you didn't divide the household. Yeah. And so now I look at my woman, my wife, and I feel less of a man because I can't protect her. Yeah. And so now I got to cry out in lamentations to my father for him to bring balance yeah. because he knows the intentions of my heart. I know that I'm not good because Christ said there's none good but the Father. Yeah. That... Well, you know, what, what... Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, when I was speaking on the issue of the female, um, you know, that's that's not ex excluding, you know, the, the root of the problem, right? And so, mm -hmm. even though even though we know in other countries that the same, you know, fa facade is being placed, uh, spread up on every station, uh, billboards and that. But the only thing that um, that's happening in the West that, you know, because we are here in the West, and, yeah, some of us get the opportunity to travel and spend a lot of time in other nations and other countries. But here in the West, and because the West is so influ influential uh, to the world, right? Um, yeah, it's having an when impact. We, when we talk about, yeah, they have, 
you know, that's the model. That's why, you know, Haitian people are right. in America. That's why Jamaicans want to come, to, you know, Germans or whatever. They want to mm-hmm. come to America, right? Especially the poor nations, right? Um, their dream is to get here. And I used to say to them, you guys don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> you think yeah. you're in hell. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> you're gonna lose your family. You're yeah. gonna, you know, your peace, and you won't have no fresh veggie fruits on the trees no more. I mean, you know, we can go on for hours of, you know, yeah. what it's like and all that. You know, yeah. but um, unfortunately, a lot of our people, especially here in the West, as far as what's happening to our people, we can talk about the other nations that have been influenced. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. since what has been created for us as so-called Negroes in America. And now they've taken on the, the program, right? They've forced the program out onto the other nations that are poor. Right. But when we just, when we're talking about just our people, we know why we got to this place. We know where we came from. Right? right. So it's not like we can blame, you know, I'm not blaming the female and I'm not blaming the male. The problem is our people don't, uh, because of the lack of information in the Bible, they never got the understanding wasn't taught properly. So, yeah, and then and, and now then, they want to deny that there was even slavery, right? Yeah, they're almost trying to, and, you and, know, they are almost trying to bring, tell us that slavery never happened, and and so that's causing some sort of cognitive dissonance or some sort of mental illness. Yeah. Yeah, the thing, uh, the thing. Not only did slavery happen, but anybody who's contemplating the idea of the family structure in America, also, we have to think about Willie Lynch and the impact that he yeah. had on on not only us because, like you said, it spread now. It started off with us, yeah. where he systematically destroyed the African American family made us to where, you know, our family is backwards. Our men are are meek and quiet and in the back room scared while our women are handling their business and doing our we're, we're completely backwards now. But because we are so influential, we've actually impacted the Caucasians and the other races around the world. Like you said, they they the mm-hmm. whole world is suffering because of of what went what went down back there with Willie Lynch, and I believe I believe we're actually going to have to learn that and study that so we can try to reverse what's actually happening there. You know, because if you don't, until you read Willie Lynch, you think all of this is natural and everything. This is the natural flow of things. No, it's not. We were trained like horses. We were broken yeah. like horses and made to be like this. But you guys, uh, we got another caller um, from 615. You don't mind, we'll bring in 615. Uh, 615, yeah. welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot. So it's nice to uh, finally get to talk to y'all. All praise to the most high. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be his name. Hallowed be his name. Uh, I, I, I just chimed in and was listening to you guys uh, the little last part and uh, talking about the household of uh, the so-called Negro. Uh, man, I do got a problem with that situation. Um, since I started on this journey, Coach, with, with you, uh, since uh, 2019, uh, I have I have uh, experienced uh, a great experience in my life, man. It, it changed my life totally. And uh, with that being said, my, my wife, you know, I'm having a hard time with, with bringing my wife along on this journey. Well, not... She's having a hard time, you know, transitioning. And I'm definitely trying to find a way to bring her along and try try different ways to, you know, get her excited. But I know that the spirit is not on her like, it, like it's been on me. And uh, I don't want to force her away from it. Uh, if I'm sitting there, I don't No, you definitely want to do that. You want to learn. Want to do that right now. <laughs> yeah, you I'm, trying my, I'm trying my hardest to find ways to get her, you know, excited about it or, you know, try to try to teach her or try to get her to, you know what I'm saying, at least try to join in every now and then. Because yeah. I'm, Pray, I'm to the point now. now. Pray. Mm-hmm. I have been doing it a lot. Okay. I, push I, push 
my wife away doing that. Because the Father's will has to be done. I know your desire, your right. zeal for the Father is never going to be like her because she has the stage in her life. All you can do is support her and continue to love her because if you start to see that he's working with you so much and you don't see it in her, you might, not, you might start feeling like he ain't working in her and that you're unequally yoked. But you're not. It was that the father was working with you. When you get ready to work with her, he's going to work with her because he's going to see, she's going to see him working in you. Okay. I push mine away like that. Okay. Yeah, I definitely don't don't want to do that. Uh, man, it's, it's just to the point, man, like my Sabbath days, you know, when we do the Sabbath days, you know, I got the, the kids are along with it. They, like, they, they've actually transitioned real well. You know, they've... Uh, they look forward to the Sabbath days, man. They looking forward to the to the piece of Trump, uh, Day of Atonement, the Tabernacle coming up. Uh, and you know, I'm trying my best to to get my wife involved in it. And it's to the point now, man. It's it's like when I do when I do my Sabbath, sometimes, man, I have to I have to get a hotel room because I don't I don't like the going in and out, you know, uh, that she do or you know bringing things in and stuff like that. You know, she try to give me my space, you know, to do it, but you know, it's it's. I know it's not being done correctly, and that, and that kind of bothers. Yeah, you got to split, y'all. You're unevenly yoked. Right. 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 Well, right. now that now there there are some. I don't I don't I hate to call them tricks to this thing, but there are some things you can do. You can try. Um, I've, I've suggested it. I, I nobody's really got back with me on any of it works. But first of all, you have to remember, you have to understand that your, your wife is cut off. Do you, do you, you know that she's cut off right now? It says, it says in Ezekiel chapter, I mean, in Exodus chapter 31 and 14, that if you defile the Sabbath day, simply by defiling the Sabbath day means you are cut off from among your people. So the moment she broke the Sabbath day, that put her in a cut off state. It basically changed her back. And if she ever was different, it changed her back into a Gentile or a heathen. So she's cut off right now. And so anything you try to do scripturally, spiritually, it's going to, it's not going to resonate with her because she is cut off. If you try to get her to read the Bible, it's not it, it's not going to work. If you try to get her to do anything scriptural, anything holy, because she's in that cut off state, because she's a Gentile, it's, it's going to fall on deaf ears and it's not going to work. So what you have to do, what you have to do is reverse it, reverse the cut off, get her back out of from that cut off state. And there's two scriptures that talk that that well, there, there's there's. Way that you can do that. One way is through baptism. She has to be baptized again. Now that may be more difficult. Of course, you can you can baptize her yourself. She's not willing to do that. Right. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. She is going to be difficult. But yeah. over there in let me find. I'm looking for the verse now. Over there in the book of James, there's a scripture that talks about if there's any sick among you. If there's if you have a sick person among you, the sick person is supposed to go to the elder and the elder is supposed to pray for the person and he's actually supposed to put oil on their head. Put oil on them. But the thing about that oil is it cleanses the sins away. It washes away that person's sin. That's why they're able to be healed when you pray for them and put that oil on them. You've basically separated them from their sin. Well, that's close to baptism, ain't it? So what I'm saying is, so what I'm saying is, maybe you can find a way to anoint her with oil as you pray over her, and that might, you know, and and doing some doing things like that, praying for, her, putting oil on her, different things, letting her come to the feast days and enjoying stuff, may help to eventually win her over. But the last thing you want to do, like like uh, the caller Yahala Rala is saying, the last thing you want to do is separate yourself from her. Right. You don't you don't want to isolate her. You even it even yeah, that's the, what I don't want to do. That's that's what I'm trying not my trying myself not to do. You right. know, even like I say, even when I was uh, getting the hotel room just to do the Sabbath day, you know, and I, I felt 
I, I didn't want to do that, but it's just on me so much to where, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm being, uh, I'm defiling the Sabbath by doing it at home. And, you know, she comes in and out, you know, or bring stuff in and things like that. Yeah, because it says that, you know, nobody in the household can do that. You're all supposed to keep right. it together, right? Right. So, so am I defiling it in myself or, you know, should I, you know, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like I, for right now, until they come, until she comes along, I feel like I should be getting, still should be getting the hotel room during the Sabbath or, you know, doing what I gotta do, you know, to, uh, Get closer to the father without without the father in the Sabbath day. Well, can I can I can I go ahead? Can I find something? Go ahead. Yeah, this is yeah yeah oh, absolutely. I I would say this: being that you know your Sabbath, you know your Sabbath coming up. If you right. plan something, like I know we're not supposed to plan ahead, but we know our Sabbaths, right? And and so if we fill that day with things to do, there will be nowhere she will want to go. What you mean, fill, fill those days up with something to do? Like, I be making, like, I, I usually make, like, unleavened bread or I bake some fish, things that take time and uh, read the scripture or, like, I, something like, you know, even things that you know she like to do, but try to incorporate the word with it here and there. But if if, if you find that you got, you got children... And so, right. it's 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 your unit together. How much time can you guys? It's only twenty four hours in a day. Yeah, man, I say the same thing. I say the same you thing, brother. You know, it's <laughs> oh. me, me, it's, you know, do do something to where it it entices her to to want to be 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 in that that environment yeah. because it's supposed to be a day of joy and uh, rejoice mm -hmm. her. Even if you yeah, can't see, you can try to see. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. And yeah. and we have to you yeah. have to remember that you 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 probably who the the scripture refers to as the first fruits, and it is the first fruits only. When you look in like the book of uh, Malachi chapter three, it's only. These first fruits that are being prepared right now, they're the only ones. The rest of the world, if you, if they're not a first fruit, even if it's your wife or your child or, you know, they're, they're not going to be interested in anything scriptural. It's not their time yet. So what we have to do, you, we have to uh, uh, allow them their space so that we don't separate ourselves from them. We have to allow them to be them and enjoy them all while we at the same time can can prepare ourselves. I don't know if we necessarily got to go to the hotel room, but we're definitely going to have to lock ourselves in that back room and because we have to get prepared. We're going to have to to concentrate on ourselves. We have to be a little bit selfish in this because if we don't get right and we're not prepared when when this all goes down we're all going to perish anyway. The whole family's going to prepare, going to perish anyway. So you, as the man of the house, if if nobody else in the house is is if you're the woman of the house, man of the house, and you're the only one who's on the path, no matter what, you got to stay on the path, no matter what they do, because when it all goes okay. down, they're 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 going to be dependent on the people on television. They're going to think the police officers are going to help them. They're going to think they're going to get a food box to feed them or whatever. And ain't none of that happening. The o the only thing that's going to help them is our Father and His Elohim. But the thing about it, if you're not mentally, physically, spiritually prepared, you you don't have anything coming. They're not going to be able to help you. So you have to be the expert in all of this. When one day she's going to want to do the Sabbath day, and so what you have to be when she decides she wants to do the be, do the Sabbath day, then you have to welcome her in with open arms and be ready to show her what it is and how it is she's supposed to do it. That goes for all of the feast days and everything. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, that's just that's, that's 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 a good thing. Because uh, I will say this, like uh, like so so the house I got is kind of split level. And uh, I had my mother-in-law there, and uh, you know it was it's days where you know she just stay completely downstairs, and you know she try not to bother 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 with me and the kids, you know, on the Sabbath days and stuff like that. So you know, like you said, it, it's it's to the point to where you know.
know, I feel like certain certain savage she respected, and you know, she try to stay out of the way and try not to, you know, bother bother us while we're doing it, and you know, uh, ho- and like I like y'all say, hopefully she can come, she'll come along with it, and when she do, I just gotta find a, a, a better ways of keeping her interested. Yeah, you know, when she do decide to, you know, walk in and ask a question, and you know. She, or if she say she overheard us talking about something, and you know, I feel like that's a way of, like y'all said, I need to find a way to, you know, uh, explain it to her in a good way and uh, keep her interested in it, and hopefully she'll come around. But yeah. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to get you guys that aspect on it, man, because I, I don't want to push her away, and uh, and I feel like the way that I came in it and we discussed this, you know, it was like I did a complete a complete turnaround. You know, and, and and I don't think she was just ready for that. You know? Yeah, yeah, and that, I take yeah. Blame for that. You so know, you I, changed. I take blame for that. You changed on her, yeah. Yeah, I think that was. Yeah, what, yeah exactly. That was exactly. Uh, well, Shalom brothers. Uh, I think that's one of the things that you know we talked about too, because for us, we were living a certain lifestyle, and we just right. totally turned different. So it was harder on me. And the children than it was for a coach because we were used to doing certain things. We were used to celebrating certain, you know, holidays and then it was just automatically quit. And so it is, it does tend to be harder on the woman. Um, I don't know how Roro feels about this, but for me, it was a lot harder though. I love the father and I believe, and even I wanted to be on board, but he changed, you know what I'm saying? He changed, and yeah. and so I, I would just say patience. Continue to love her. Uh, yeah. Take take that time with yeah. her, yeah. and, you know, don't push her away. Don't push her away, because eventually, okay. eventually, you know, Scripture does tell us that, you know, <laughs> it tells us, us women, that our husband will be will be won by our conduct. But I also believe that, you know, with scripture, it's always circular that the wife will be won by the husband's conduct as well. So I would just say, you know, continue to pray for her, continue to love her. And, you know, she will. I I definitely believe she will come along and we will be praying as well. Right, coach? Yeah. And and think about this, too, to to uh, Yahara's point. When you read in the the book of um, Isaiah in chapter 58, it talks about the fast. I mean, it talks about uh, the Sabbath day at the end of chapter 58. And it talks about how it is that we're supposed to get the blessings of Jacob. And in that, it tells us to get those blessings, we have to make it a joyous occasion. And, you know, that was a a learning uh, moment for me because I had been keeping the Sabbath day for years. But it was mostly just sitting down and doing nothing. There was right. never really any joy and excitement in it or anything, you know. But what I'm saying is, is that you and your kids, if, you know, y'all take the extra time to, to make it a joyous occasion, then maybe your wife will get a whiff of it upstairs. Maybe y'all have a special meal. It's a Sabbath day meal, you know, and then if it's something that your wife likes, maybe she'll join in and, you know, board games just something to a music something that she likes to to tempt her to actually come in and then as she comes you know maybe she'll come you know a few minutes this week and then a few minutes next week and then more and more until you know you you, but again the the thing is you she's all right she's all right in the state that she's in she's just like the rest of the world there's coming a, a an awaken an awakening is coming, and when that point comes, yeah. the whole world is going to come and they're going to seek you out. You know, anybody who's being rejected right yeah. now, it's because when the world gets humbled, they're going to seek you out, and you're going to have all of the answers and you're going to have the knowledge and what it is that we're supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. So, you no. Know. This, this is this is another. Well, I will. This, I will. Sorry, yeah. this, this is another yeah. thing that, that, that should be able to help you out is the fact that I know that the stage I'm at now, I wasn't at last year. So she can't be at the stage you're at right. where you're at right now. Right. So you have to know that the Father is working on his plan now, and he's starting with you. He's yeah. starting with us men. You can come men again. So we don't have fear of him, but grow to love him and know that he's here to love us and accept his
is love, life, and of abundance, and yeah. it'll all fall into place. Okay, you know, I brothers, kind of course, your brothers, as his brothers, we coming out, you know, his sisters, but as, you know, some of the tribes, you know, we coming out of, out of curses. You know, I grew up around all aunties and women, no daddies, no men, you know, and so it, it's like I had to learn through the through scripture how to be a man. Yeah. Even though the women did a great job, but what, what what happened with my wife and I is that it was me that had to change, you know, and because I met someone uh, innocent and that was better than me, and I, I had to, you know, and so that change. And, and with the laws and statutes and commandments, you know what that do to a brother, you know? And so now, as men, we are now becoming men. I, I was, I'll be talking to my brother from Judah, man. I said, what do a slave look like that just that just rang the bell and said, you're free? What, what do his character look like? How does he sound? How does his, his stature look? That's Jake, man. He, he has no confidence. He don't know where to go. There's no ego. In, in, a, in a slave that just got free, you know, we only know what to do, you know. So right. now we're building up, and it's the, it's the scriptures, and it's, it's, and, and it's all obedience, you know. And, and it, the, the joyful part is is knowing that, you, you know, you're doing exactly what Most High asked you to do, and, and you're not who you used to be. I'm so grateful that I, I'm not who I used to be and where I'm used to be, because now I get it. And so I, 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 every day, I, every day, I work on, I work on my wife. I do things to make my wife fall in love with me every day for years. I don't care because I'm living a fantasy. To me, this I ain't living like I used to. This, this fantasy is a real thing now. It's, it's like I can love how I want to love, and it's and it's and it's working. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, oh, it's, yeah. You know, this is, we never seen people into like live on TV except the movies and stuff. You know, this is what we look like. This is what it sounds mm-hmm. like. And we're learning and we have to be kind and we have to be patient. But most of, most of all, we have to believe in one another because nobody believes in us. Mm-hmm. We believe in one another and lift each other up. We like, you got this yeah. up because we never seen this done before. And it's, it's Jesus from a, a book that's written from our father that is heavy duty. Nothing to play yeah. with. So we're doing um, our best, uh, man. We're coming out of church. And it's going to be all right. I just, I just wanted to... Um, I, I, the, when you see the words, you know, we're coming out of curses, this is, you know, go back to the Willie Lynch information. And when we break that down, if we could really, as couples, awaken couples, things like that, if we can um, get that concept of what that Willie Lynch thing is about and we can identify it in ourselves, right, help each other identify yeah, it. Than with, yeah, and, heavy than when it's heavy. And um, as far as, uh, like, when Stacey was talking about how, you know, her life changed when her when her husband decided to, you know, follow the father. And then there are some of us that uh, are just dealing with family members. But when you, when you say we're coming out of the curse, for, for a lot of us sisters, we, we, we have never seen a man. Right. Like, like we never seen him before. We yeah. we don't even know what he's like. Well, what would he look like? Yeah, like, exactly. I have to tell you, exactly like, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. in your situation, the brother that's talking about his his wife there, she's watching you, right? She's just trying to see yeah. is he going to be consistent? Is he real? Is this really real? Is this really working? Because we oh, have yeah. been lied to. <laughs> Right, we we don't have a clue what a man is like. The like the curse, the guy saying with the curse, like we're like, um, you're already together. You can't really leave her. So, you know, really, um, right. And obviously, you know, he woke you up first. So that's you're supposed to be woke first, right? right. So, right. for us. Um, God created the man first. If we go with the story of the, the written scripture, God, man was created first. He learns. He 
He learned everything. He knew about everything. He knew all the animals and blah, blah, blah. The You know, the, 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 the list goes on and on and on. What he knew before Eve showed up. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's so good, we, yeah, that's a good scenario right there. Yeah, that, that's... Yeah. Okay. So, you know, that's men, good. when we, when, you, when a woman actually gets meets a real man... He he can he can he can raise the kids. He can cook. He can build a house. He can you know he can talk to the animals and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because he already he already knew everything. He was already a man. Yeah. He just need a little bit of help. When he, <laughs> you know, he just needed some help. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, have a little bit have a little bit more patience with the sisters on this level. Right. And, and for us as the sister, you know, because we never had a father, all boy all men are like our brothers, right? And we're mm. like, No, you don't know nothing, nigga. You know, like I know you know, like yeah. Right. So I thought I was crazy talking to this world. So us, us, us females I like we have to do little over here. I thought I was crazy. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> so some of us, some of us sisters, we gotta mature in this way to, but to, the to brother, give the respect the brother, and honor. Yeah, yeah but the this brother, is why you have to it's, stay, it's, though. It's, you it's, can't be running away. Like you can't leave the person. You know what I mean? You can't go right, hiding right. in the closet. I don't want to get to that point. I don't want to get to that point. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to because because. Throughout it, throughout it all, it's like it's like we said, you know, I'm I'm not the same person that she fell in love with, you know, and uh, I, I am, but I but, but my but the way of living has changed for for me, you know, and 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 that alone is is a shocker, you know, it's it's it's, it's, it's a lot for her, as it will be for any anyone I, I believe. You know, and and what I don't want to do is I, I I know I'm not supposed to, to I'm not I know I'm not supposed to force it on her, but I, at the same time I don't want to I don't want to defile what it is that 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 the, that the Most High has put on my heart to do, and I feel like that's what I'm doing. But I'm I'm, I'm listening to 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 all of y'all, and I thank all of y'all. Uh, the patience, the patience. I gotta, I gotta have that patience, and I gotta realize that um, that he started with me for a reason. He started with me for a reason, and and I'm gonna continue to work at it and and build and and do what I gotta do. And I, I do got a question for y'all. What, what do y'all mean by making making the Sabbath a joyous occasion? Because I know, I know you're not supposed to, you know, uh, do certain things on the Sabbath day. You know, please, uh, remember it for me and my uh, kids. Cooking. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Playing your music, uh, cooking, uh, spending time with your kids, you know, just like the fake Christmas. You know, there's yeah. music and food and uh, drink and, yeah. you know, you're not supposed to, you don't need to be drunk and everything, but what's the difference? Like, right. This yeah. is the real one, you yeah. know. It's fun, wanna... like play music. I don't want to lean on my own understanding, but when I say when it says be a uh, joyous occasion, because we're supposed to be doing it in the remembrance of our Messiah and the blessings that He bestowed upon us, so why would we be sad? Yeah, we should be joyful right. that okay. we're, we we've been, we've been blessed with you know. It's a blessing. I have those those that you have around you, that's a blessing. You hold tightly to them, you know. <laughs> So, so my thing is, I guess the question I'm asking is, as far as you know, I know the the law consists of you know not not doing your own uh, not doing your own things on the Sabbath and stuff like that, and and that's where we're at, you know, uh, with the kids, with the kids, I kind of, you know, we 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 do study, we we do Bible study, and then after you know, I, I write down questions, we'll go over. Uh, I'll come up with some questions for them, and we'll do highlight some kind of family feud type thing, you know, to where, you know, I ask a question and they ring a bell, and whoever ring the bell, things like that, just to get them interested and and keep them, you know, happy and and, and finding different ways of doing it, you know. But I don't want. I, I thought we weren't supposed to cook and you know do all these other things on the Sabbath day. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, 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 that's like... What I, that's what I mean by asking well, y'all I mean, on, on how to make it a joyous occasion, you know. Yeah, well, but... The pre right. I don't play music, I don't do none of that. Hmm. Well, well... well the, <laughs> now, the, the rule about no yeah, cooking... I don't, I, don't, I don't do none of that. I don't, I don't listen to music, I don't, I don't cook, I don't, you know... Mainly what we do is we read scripture and we pray. Okay, you know? Now, and, and, that, and that, that could be a reason why my wife not, you know, yeah. that's probably one reason why she's not so interested, you know, yeah. uh, because, because to her, it might look boring, it might seem boring. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I will, I will, I will refer you back to the scripture um, that talks about yeah. the do's and the don'ts of the Sabbath day, because, you know, um, right. the, the book Jubilees chapter 50, it tells us all of the do's and the don'ts. In, and and what it is right. you can do and what and you really don't want to add to that now you don't want to if it's right. not in there you don't want to add to it because that you got to remember that's what got okay. that's what got Adam in trouble that's what that's what got Eve in trouble okay. I should say is because Adam uh he 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 added to the rule what happened was the, the our father told Adam he told him don't eat of the tree of knowledge. But when you read in the scripture, Adam told Eve, he said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge. Don't even touch it. And those added words there at the end, don't even touch it. Satan used that in order to trick her because she when she reached out to touch it, he looked, he said, see, did nothing happen. Your husband lied to you. Nothing happened. So now go ahead and eat it. So you don't want to oh. add to it at all. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh my! And that's funny that you brought that up, there, Coach. Because people like to. I, I was the type of child that was very quiet, and I didn't want. I didn't say words that didn't have. You know, what's the purpose of talking? And I didn't deal. I, I didn't deal well with other people that just talked, just made up, just words, just you know. And that makes sense. That is, you know, that's that's spot on because that's. That's the difference between it all. It's like he says, "Don't eat." That and touching. That's a fabrication. That's little, that's more uh, to the story. That's not really true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And Something so, like and so, your wife, she could be saying, you know, they they can't they can't even listen to music on the Sabbath day, and so she's using that to to yeah, and so yeah yeah, yeah absolutely, and that, and that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm. It's like. Strict, the strict, I guess, <laughs> I guess the strictness of it, you know what I mean, uh, is kind of turning her off from it. And like I say, that goes to, you know, what you just said, I guess I'm adding things to it, you know, uh, rather than going what it says, you know. Yeah, uh, see, yeah you can... music never been, never been a part of it. Uh, being on the computer, never been a part of it, you know. Uh, the phones or none of that, you know, so... Uh, uh -huh. You know, we, we it, it, it's a very strict process with me when it comes to the Sabbath. You know, I, I, I try not to, you know, defile it in any shape, form. Or right, fashion. yeah. You Understandable. Know, that's, uh, that's the way you're supposed to be now. You got to err on the side of caution. But you can actually use that now that you have this. You can actually use that when you when you talk to her. Right. It, you can, it, it can sound like you're compromising now. <laughs> When you, you know, say, well, you know, maybe we could play some music for you if you'll come and join us or, you know, this, that, yeah. and the other. Yeah. And because it, it'll be something little that'll make a join in. Yeah. Because okay. I know for okay. myself, I was celebrating it all by my, you know, I don't have any family members that to celebrate, you know, the, these festivals. And I've been trying to follow. And for myself, I mean, because I know what the word is and the spirit is in me, it is joyful. Even if I if I laid in, you know, just lied in my bed all day, right? Or right. you know, when I got the recipe to make leavened bread and and you know the Passover, I was excited because yeah. you know it. I understood what it was, right? And it does say in the book about you know, um, you know that. You know, we've tasted it and we find that it's good, right? So the people that, even like now, this is this is the Sabbath day. 
um, now the evening's over, but my family people around me, since I've been, you know, trying to follow for the last two years or so, they, they're they actually supporting me in little ways, right? Oh. They'll, you know, they'll go out of their way, they catch themselves, oh, I'm sorry, okay, I'm going to be quiet. Or, what are you going to do today? Are you, is it the Sabbath today? So, yeah. mm-hmm. it's working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, it's yeah. working. And, and, and because we've been, we've been celebrating lies, right, fake joy, um, and this is the real, the truth, and the life, they're going to see it, especially as the man in the family, you know, you, when you say she married you and, she, you know, you were a different person, yeah, you were, right. you were the, the, the false person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Now yeah. she's getting, yeah. she's going to get to know the real you, and you, she's going to love you in another way now. Yeah. Right. right? Huh. The love that's going to, the, the love that's going to manifest from this experience, it's going to be the true love. So you can't really be talking about like uh, oh, she married the wrong deep. person and everything. That's you know deep. what I mean? She's gonna, she's gonna, because the Bible said, and the Bible says that the, the, the this relationship that he's created is to show you through the couple his love, right? So. Yeah. He's going to use you to get you all purified and beautiful and shining and everything. And she's going to be looking at that. Yeah. And she's going to start to come willingly to you. And you won't even have to, you know. And when she wakes up to it, when when it's really the work is done in her, where she looks at you and sees the beauty of the Father in you. You know, it's gonna be on then. Yeah. Right. You know. And and, and the father, our father, he wants it to be like that, where she, he wants it to be like that, where she's coming willing. He did the same thing for you. You got to remember, he didn't make you do anything. Everything you did was because you wanted mm-hmm. to, and he wants her to be the same way. He wants yeah. her to come willingly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it, but the thing about it, when you win over, you're gonna get credit for that. Sorry, what? I, I, I believe it has something to do with that, that masculine and feminine side of us, you know, because us as men, we don't want to tap into that feminine side. But you even thinking about your wife and um, wanting to grow with her is that feminine side. So you just embrace that and to work with it, you know what I mean? Because I know I'm oh, trying yeah. to work, work with it, you know what I mean? And, I have no shame, you know. And I pray for all the time, man, that, that he that he, you know, soften her heart and bring her along this journey with with me and the kids, you know. And I still pray for the kids because it, it's a big turnaround for them as well, you know. And uh, they they show as if they taking it, they taking it like like you know, they they you know they interested and they and they and they excited about it. And, and I thank Father all the time for it, you know, because I, I would expect for it, for, it, for it to be harder on them than than it would be for her. But yeah, well they haven't they haven't gotten I, I've to got a different aspect on it now. Thank you guys. Yeah, they haven't. Your kids haven't been cut off yet. They haven't done anything to get themselves cut off yet. If they ever get to that point where they what, get, get themselves cut they off, they'll do the same thing. <laughs> These thirteen years, thirteen year old and a fifteen year old man. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's you doing good with them. You're what doing was good. you saying, Coach? They as long as you can keep them coach. from getting cut off, because that's a that's a serious block. Now, if they do anything that gets them cut off, it's going to put them in that rejection state too, and then you'll have to find some way to recover them. Right. Yeah. So and right. and I, I was I planning on. I got a class coming up on what all because it's a lot of things that get you cut off missing a sabbath day missing atonement day uh passover even uh-huh. eating meat if, if you eat meat incorrectly like if you eat meat with blood in it that will get you cut off it's a lot of things that get you yeah. that get you cut off and and but and that, and that takes you back to where you was before you was ever baptized and that's why people have to get baptized again 
is because, you know, we were in the fold and then we got cut off. I try to even watch my thoughts because if I have a bad thought, I might have to drop some water on my head. <laughs> yeah. And, what, and, and people that are eating like certain meats, like, you know, because that was a difficult one for me and my family was um, pork, uh, you know, cutting up pork and shrimps and lobsters and stuff like that. And, you know, they just saw me wasting food. You know, they just thought she's lost her mind. We got all this food, and she's talking about not eating it now, right? Right. <laughs> and so I, I did, I, I don't remember where I, I heard it, but for the people that do uh, eat, if they do eat pork or, or um, I think it's pork. I think if, if you somehow mess up and you, you eat some pork, is there a, a, a cleansing process? Uh, I believe something like that was is in Leviticus. But I don't. I well, don't it talks about how if you certain foods that that you eat, you have to take a bath afterwards. You know, and you know sometimes my we'll we'll make a mistake, especially when you you know eat with other people. Sometimes you don't know what you're eating, mm -hmm. and you know that's that's our thing is. Um, Whenever, you know, somebody partakes in pork, now they have to take a bath, they have to wash their clothes and, you know, treat it as, as if they were unclean until the end of the day. Now, that particular rule doesn't get you cut off. Eating pork doesn't get you cut off like like eating blood does. But I, I understand what you're saying. We don't want to uh, uh, put ourselves in that position. The, the bad thing about eating pork and any food that's on that list is, is that it's actually... It's, it's dangerous now, but when we get in this tribulation and, you know, we're having to fend for ourselves and, you know, not we're going to be in unsanitary conditions, that food is really going to harm us. You know, it's not always going to be cooked properly, you know, it, it, or come from good sources. And those unclean animals, they, they're actually going to uh, cause physical, physical harm to us, give us bugs and parasites and all kinds of stuff like that. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I found that when I stopped eating those things, my skin cleared up. My, mm -hmm. you know, my my, my tongue, my uh, body order um, rashes stopped. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I I definitely see saw a difference when I stopped eating that. Yeah. Just, just on the physical, just on the physical side. Yeah, and then I, when I my testimony is when I stopped eating it. Um, and I ate accidentally, um, ate some and I could tell the difference, you know, it, it had an, an immediate effect, effect on me. You know, I think I ordered a pizza from Domino's. It was like a cheeseburger pizza, but they didn't tell me that it was a bacon cheeseburger pizza. <laughs> and then when I ate it, yeah, it was a big deal. It was like, you know, I, I could sense a change. You know, something, something's uh -huh. going on. So your body actually stops being used to eating that, you know, and it, uh -huh. yeah. 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 Yeah, I know yeah, when I, I met my wife, well, when I had met my wife, she, uh, she was eating pork and I, I never really ate pork. Uh, I kind of grew up on not eating pork and, uh, and she had stopped for a while and <laughs> she called herself being slick and tried to sneak in one of them, uh, them, uh, pork, them, uh, what, what you call them, pork chops when I wasn't around. And, uh, she ended up getting, getting real sick behind it, man. And yeah. Ever since then, mm -hmm. she, she had stopped, yeah. you know. So, mm -hmm. it just goes with you. <laughs> yeah, that's what it did to me, baby. Yeah. Real sick. Uh, ate pork ever since, you know. Well, I mean, you, yeah, you got it that far, she's so doing good. <laughs> Do something special for her. Go get her something special. Something she like and, and whip right. it out on on a Saturday. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All praise. All praise. 
Jazz Soul Praise. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Coach and JT. It yeah, is so wonderful so. To, to talk Great. to you guys. Yeah, this has been a good conversation. We're going to have to do it again one day. This is uh, well needed. I believe this is uh, well needed. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot more that come on and, and have more questions for, for, for all of us. Man, and this could be one good, one, one good community or one camp is whatever you say, you know, whatever, you know, goes along with it. But it's, it's well needed. Uh, you know? Praise the Father. Well needed. Well, I think I really it's always Thank good you, to hear from brothers, hear from brothers and sisters. You know, we all go through, and it, it feels good to know that you're not alone. You know, and you're going through. Absolutely. You know, you know, Absolutely. And it, it's, it's so it's grateful. So we appreciate appreciate you, Coach. And I I, I want to apologize, y'all, because I'm at work. From people, I'm flying back and forth with phone. You know, because it's exciting to me, and I got all this noise around me. So I want to apologize on my behalf. But I just really enjoyed this. You know, my wife and I. And, and coach, we support you, man. Yeah, I agree. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. You guys help out a oh, lot, yeah. you know, and on times because I'm, I'm going through it with you guys. Everything that you guys are going through, I'm right there with you. The family problems, the money problems, the rejection problems, everything. And, you know, when you guys, you know, show support, it, it, it helps keep me going, you know. Um, and you know, let me know. You know, it's, it's real. It's a real motivator to to know that somebody out there cares. Uh, you know, I did. you and the family is always in my prayers. Yeah, so yeah. you know, you stay see the home, stay all y'all, man. Because I feel like if the if if if, if Father wouldn't have brought you into my life, I'd probably still be on that same path that I was on, man. And you guys are a blessing, man. And uh, I hope you guys know that. And I. I, I Hope y'all keep up the good work that y'all doing, and the Father is working with you guys. Yeah, I appreciate that. Appreciate All that. All praises. Well, guys, I believe we're about out of time. We got about two minutes left. <laughs> yeah, it's glad. Let's give praise, coach. Gotta, 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 gotta give him praise, coach. Let's go. Yeah. Praise him. I wanted, oh, I'm gonna send you an email, Stacy, on your herbs, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. No problem. All right. Yep. And we, like Coach mm-hmm. said, I want to uh, reiterate that how we appreciate you guys so much. Is um, you guys don't know how much, you know, I appreciate the support and encouragement that y'all give to Coach because, you know, I see as a wife that it is a lonely journey for him, and you know, I appreciate appreciate you guys so much. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Coach, I do got one more question for you, though, Coach. Go ahead. Feast, Feast of Tabernacles, is the invitation open? Yeah, invitation is open. It's, it, it is definitely open. Um, we're here on the Hillbilly Homestead, and, and I'm going to tell you, um, it, it, just be prepared to, to camp out. When you want to come here, it's all about camping hey, out man, anyway. I got, I got camp. I got this. 90 okay. seconds. Yeah. So, I mean, right. we good there, right. then. Yeah, you guys can come on down. We're down here in Repton, Alabama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, guys can, you guys can come on down. It's, it's um, We're in the wilderness for sure. I'll tell you now, we're in the wilderness. <laughs> I got you. I got you. That's where I live, okay, in Canada. <laughs> I'm in the yep. wilderness here. Well, praise our Father in Heaven for giving us this chance because, you know, the alternative, you know, was in the East. You know, and living that Babylonian lifestyle, and it's only when we get out here that we realize that we we never really liked that that lifestyle anyway. We didn't want that stuff, mm-hmm. and it's only because of the grace of our Father that He even gives us the opportunity to see everything that He's provided for us, and He's provided everything for us: our mm-hmm. food, our clothing, our our shelter. Everything is out here in the wilderness. You just gotta be willing to go out there and and be patient mm-hmm. and and be. Mm-hmm. Be humble, be um, satisfied with what it is that he do, that he do give us, and you know, just live life. You know. Hey, man, of that. All right, and with that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom. We love you guys. Second. Love you guys. All praises to the Father. All praises. Hallelujah. Okay. Have a good evening. And we'll see you guys next time. Okay. Night.
Bye. <laughs>